Alleluia. Christ is risen. Welcome to worship on this glorious Easter Sunday morning. We're glad you're with us here in the sanctuary and online. We pray that as you go through this day, worship is meaningful for you and that you find what we find here and that this is a church where love lives. We would call your attention to the announcements that are in the bulletin, just a few. Just remind you that following the 10 o'clock service, there'll be an Easter egg hunt for the children. So we invite you, if you're here this morning, to come back after that. Uh, for that Easter egg hunt. Also on uh, April 13th, uh, Tuesday, Pastor Andrew will be beginning our new Bi pastor's Bible study uh, to be exploring the Bible through the brush of a saint and a sinner, uh, Carvecchio's paintings, and so we encourage you to join Pastor Andrew for that at 7 o'clock. Also on Sunday, April 25th, following the 11 o'clock service, there will be a Q&A session for those interested in what is going on with our relationship with Kuntz Memorial Lutheran Church uh, in Louisville and that whole question of possible merger or adoption and so an opportunity to get your questions answered to hear uh, what is the current state of the discussions with Kuntz Memorial Lutheran Church. We do want to thank everyone who's provided us with the Easter flowers this morning to not only brighten up the sanctuary with their beauty but also the smell is just starting to drift through the room and uh, increase the joy of this service. Remind you, you can pick these flowers up following the 10 o'clock service. Let us now prepare for our festival of celebration with our prelude. <laughs> Let us stand. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. you. Let us pray. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia.
a reading from Acts. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message sped throughout the Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem, they put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them. Though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Christ is risen, alleluia. Be not afraid, sing out for joy. Christ is risen, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. 
As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed, for you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Happy Easter. Well, let me ask you a question. What does Easter mean to you? You know, I've got a pretty good idea of what Easter is to me, but, you know, the reality is sometimes it can be a little bit confusing. Of course, I I have to admit, for some, I'm not sure why it's so confusing because, you know, let's be honest, they hear one or two sermons a year on Christmas and Easter, kind of like our friend in the cartoon. You know, he says, Reverend, you're in a rut. Every time I come here, you, you preach about the resurrection. <laughs> of course, I don't know about you, when I was growing up, the resurrection and Easter Sunday was a little bit confusing. And I know that I'm not alone. There was a Sunday school teacher that was asking her six-year-olds about the, the meaning of Easter. Children, she said, do you know why we celebrate Easter? A little girl raised her hand. Yes, Jenny, said the teacher. Well, Jenny said, well, is Easter when we put on costumes and go trick-or-treating? No, Jenny, (laughs) that's right. That's Halloween. Does anyone else know? Well, a little boy yelled, it's when we set off fireworks. No, Jimmy, that's Independence Day. Anybody else? Well, there was a shy little girl in the back and said, Well, Easter is when Jesus died. And the teacher replied, well, that's right, Shauna. And what happened to Jesus that makes Easter so special? Well, she went on, he died and got buried, and every Easter he comes out. And if he sees his shadow, there's six more weeks of winter. (laughs) Well, to clear up the confusion this morning, I, I brought this colorful little plastic egg this morning. I brought it because of what's inside of it, something that will ultimately help us understand what this day is all about. But to understand what today is all about, I think we need to first remember what happened on Friday. Remember what happened on Good Friday? Jesus was crucified on Good Friday. They took the cross, they hammered his hands and feet onto it, and they left him to die. After he was dead, his followers took his body, wrapped it in cloth, and placed it in a tomb and sealed it with a rock. Just imagine how Jesus' followers felt at that moment. They must have been terrified. They were sad. They were scared, filled with anxiety. Why? Because his followers loved Jesus. They couldn't imagine the world without him. Well, now back to the egg. What does this egg have to do with today? Well, inside this egg is the answer to the mystery of Easter. Now, Jesus was put in a tomb. Easter morning, some of the followers went to the tomb, and of course, you know what they found. The same thing that's inside this egg. Absolutely nothing. The tomb was empty. The empty tomb is the miracle of Easter. The empty tomb is proof that God's love is stronger than anything else, even even death. And the message for us and for those disciples over 2,000 years ago is that, well, because the tomb is empty, we can relax because he lives. See, that's what Easter is all about. Jesus says to us, relax. I'm alive. I am resurrected. In fact, why don't you turn to your neighbor and Tell them to relax, he lives. Go ahead and do that. 
Now, if you don't think that's exactly true, the fact is, is that that's what we're told in every single resurrection story in all of the Gospels. To the women at the tomb in Matthew, Jesus said, Do not be afraid. The Gospel of Mark, of course, that we read records Jesus saying, Do not be amazed. In Luke, Jesus seems to tease the two men on the road to Emmaus. And in John, the words shared in the midst of the tent is simply, Peace be with you. The disciples could relax. The tomb was empty. And there are at least two reasons, many more probably, but at least two reasons that we too can relax. Two reasons that are grounded in the fact that Jesus is risen. We can relax because our greatest problem now has a solution. What is our greatest problem? Well, we could probably all come up with a pretty good list, but at its root, it's something that we call sin. From the beginning of time, sin has been our greatest problem. But, of course, you know that that's not what was intended. Genesis tells us that God made man and woman in his own image. And what this means is that God gave us freedom of the will. Of course, as Lutherans, we understand that it's kind of a finite free will, where we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to love, but we are free not to love. We are encouraged to follow, but we can choose not to follow. We can be moved to obey, but we are free not to obey. The simple fact is God had high expectations for humanity. But the reality is we blew it time and time again. We exercised our freedom and chose against God. We fell short of what God intended fell short of the relationship that God desired for each and every one of us. And the result is what we call sin. Sin is expressing our freedom by pushing God away. Sin means that we've decided then to go our own way instead of God's way. And the sin, of course, we know also pushes other people away, widening the gap between us and others. And one of the favorite New Testament words for sin is a word that means to miss the mark. As in archery, you draw the bow, the arrow speeds through the air, but it falls to the ground before reaching the intended target. That sin, missing the mark. St. Paul tells us all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And just how serious is this sin problem? Well, there's a wonderful story. Well, I don't know if wonderful is the word but a very interesting story in Thomas Costain's history, The Three Edwards. A story about Reynold III, a 14th century duke in what is now Belgium. Reynold was grossly overweight. He was often called by his Latin nickname, Crassus, which means fat. And after a violent quarrel, Reynold's younger brother Edward led a successful revolt against him. And Edward captured his brother but didn't kill him. Instead, he built a room around Reynold in the Newkirk Castle and promised him that he could regain his title and property as soon as he was able to leave the room. Now, understand that this wouldn't have been difficult for most people since the room had several windows and a door of near normal size. None of it was locked or barred. The problem was Reynold's size. To regain his freedom, he needed to lose weight, but Edward knew his older brother, and each day he sent a variety of delicious foods, and instead of dieting his way out of prison, Reynold gorged himself. And when Duke Edward was accused of cruelty, he had a ready answer. My brother is not a prisoner. He may leave whenever he so wills it. Well, Reynold stayed in that room for ten years. When Edward was finally killed and battled, he was finally released, but died one year later, a prisoner of his own appetite. The reason why I share this is because that's the way it is with sin. Paul tells us the wages of sin is death. This death is both spiritual and physical. Sin means the death of the total person. And what's the solution? How can we sinful people be brought back into right relationship with God? Well, that is the message of Easter. You can relax, for he has risen. The tomb is empty. Paul writes, though you were dead through your shortcomings, God made you alive through the fellowship with Christ. The second reason that we can relax is because our deepest need 
has now been fully met. What's our deepest need? Well, again, we could probably come up with a list of what, our, what we feel to be our deepest needs on any given day, but if you were to boil it down to its basic core, isn't it really power? Not power over others, mind you, but the power for daily living. I mean, the reality is life is hard, isn't it? Many of us have experienced deaths and serious illnesses and friends and family who've battled with addiction. There's one thing that we know this year, it's been over a year now that we've been battling the pandemic that is COVID. We know that these things have been brought to the forefront every single day, reminded constantly of what our death numbers are and how many people are sick. Hopefully there's good news on the horizon. Let me ask you, just for, for fun, how many of you have already received your first vaccine? Very good. Anybody received their second vaccine? Oh, very good. You know, the more vaccinated we become, the more closely we can come together and be together to sing out and to shout out, Hallelujah, Christ is risen. We need more of you to do that. But even with the shots, and even though there is that glimmer of hope, we still hear news of different various strains and different activities. There's shootings that go on, and we're constantly reminded of the, the battle that continues. There's still that sense of fear and despair. Maybe you can relate to Charlie Brown. Lucy, in her usual warm and sympathetic way, was trying again to help Charlie Brown figure out his life. And after several attempts, she sighed and said, Charlie Brown, you are the foul ball in the line drive of life. <laughs> Ever feel that way? Between Good Friday and Easter Sunday, the followers of Jesus experienced those same feelings. They felt defeated. They were fearful. They spent most of their time behind closed doors, sealed off from anyone else, avoiding anyone else. But after the resurrection, the reality is, is that we are here today because they became courageous, they became daring, they became bold, they became triumphant, and soon they became witnesses to the love that they experienced in Jesus Christ. How are we to explain this difference? Well, there was a logging foreman who sold a farmer a chainsaw guaranteed to cut down 50 trees in a single day. A week later, the very unhappy farmer came to report that the power saw must be faulty. It only averaged three trees a day. Well, the logger grabbed the saw, pulled the cord, and the saw probably went bzzz. Well, the startled farmer demanded, hey, what's that noise? St. <laughs> Paul writes, how tremendous is the power available to us who believe in God. Through the power of the resurrection, Christ invites us to allow his life and his power to flow through us, to receive his grace and forgiveness and mercy, and to live in the power of the Holy Spirit. Because of the resurrection, the fearful became fearless, the cowardly became brave. Why? Because they could relax, because he was risen. Today I invite you to experience the power of the resurrection in your life. It's the power to free us from sin. It's the power to help us live resurrected lives each and every minute of every day. And we can do this because, well, Christ is risen. Together, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Let us stand to sing. <laughs>
let us join in confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Hear us, O God. Praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Hear us, O God. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Hear us, O God. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill in need with hope those who are afraid or confused, those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying and those who grieve. Assure them of your promises. Hear us, O God. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this assembly with joy as we are called your beloved in baptism. Multiply that joy so that we share it at home, at work, and in our community. Hear us, O God. Praise to you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust that we join with all who have gone before us in proclaiming your mercy endures forever. Hear us, O God. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Turn and give a sign of peace to the people around you. You may be seated. We'd remind you as you leave this morning, you may leave your offering in the basket at the back of the sanctuary. If you are with us online and are visiting from another congregation, we encourage you to support your home congregation with your offerings. You can also go to wherelovelives.org and push the Donate Now button, or use the Vanco app.
Let us stand for prayer. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to Almighty and merciful God for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent us, Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he'd given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you, for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be our honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and hear us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated and prepare your communion elements. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ 
shed for you. Let us stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Relax in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. And next week. Good
job. 